This video includes information on corrosion and electroplating. Corrosion is another type of redox reaction. Again, it's an electrochemical process. So to give you an example, here we have some iron. And typically iron is coated with something so that it can't rust. Maybe it's painted with a, a, a layer of paint that enables the iron to not be exposed to oxygen and water. But if some of that paint is chipped away, the oxygen is gonna go through a reduction reaction. The iron is gonna go through an oxidation reaction. The iron ions will then react with the water and produce rust, iron oxide. And that's a positive voltage, which tells us that this process is a spontaneous process. Iron corrodes spontaneously. It's an example of a redox reaction. Electrolysis is a process that causes a non-spontaneous reaction, a reaction that's reactant favored to occur. And the way that electrolysis takes place is we force the electrochemical cell to work in the reverse direction, in the non-spontaneous direction by adding in an external energy source. It's used in purifying metals. It's used in electroplating. If we were to look here, here's an example of an electrolysis process where we're gonna be turning chloride ions into chlorine gas and sodium ions into sodium metal. We need an electrical source, an outside source, in order for this process to take place. And we don't have any salt bridge when we look at these electrolysis processes. So in this case, the chloride ions are being oxidized into chlorine gas and we're generating electrons. The sodium ions are accepting those electrons to become sodium atoms and we're producing sodium atoms, liquid sodium, and we're producing gaseous chlorine. Electroplating, okay? Let's say that we have a solution of silver nitrate and we put in a silver electrode and we put in some spoon. If we add in an electrical source, we're going to electroplate this spoon with silver. What would happen is the silver metal in our anode would lose electrons and become silver ions in the solution. The electrons would flow over to our spoon. The silver ions in the solution will absorb those electrons and become silver atoms, and the silver atoms will plate onto the spoon. The mass of the silver electrode here would go down over time as the silver atoms are becoming silver ions, and the mass of this spoon would go up over time as the silver ions become silver atoms and plate the spoon. Math-wise, if we were to look at silver ions becoming silver atoms, it's a one-to-one -one ratio with respect to the silver ions and the electrons. If we were to look at something like copper ions to electrons, the ratio is a one-to-two ratio. Matter and charge are conserved in chemical reactions. And when we look at these balanced equations, we're gonna be able to use the stoichiometry in those balanced equations to figure out how much metal 
we can plate out in our electroplating process. So the number of moles of electrons transferred during a redox reaction is determined by the flow of electrons in that external circuit. So a couple of equations, charge equals current times time. Current is I, time is T, charge is Q. When we talk about a Coulomb, a Coulomb is defined as one amp times one second, means the same thing. And charge is converted to moles of electrons with Faraday's constant. So this was written before as 9.65 times 10 to the fourth. This time it's just written out as 96,500 coulombs. It can be written either way. Equals one mole of electrons. So let's put all of that together. And it's going to look like a stoichiometry problem. What mass of nickel will be deposited on the cathode of an electrolysis cell if a current of 20 milliamps for one hour flows through an aqueous solution containing nickel ions? All right, first of all, the nickel ions are going to absorb electrons and become nickel atoms. And the ratio is a one to two ratio. That's gonna be important. And we know that our charge equals our current times our time. The current is 20 milliamps. Well, we can convert milliamps to amps the same way we could convert like milliliters to liters. Okay, one milliamp equals 10 to the minus three amps. So here's our current in amps. We multiply it by our time in seconds. One hour equals 3,600 seconds. So our charge is 72 coulombs. All right, so now we're gonna do a little stoichiometry. We can take 72 coulombs and use Faraday's constant to convert from coulombs of charge to moles of electrons. This balanced equation here enables us to go from moles of electrons to moles of nickel. And then the periodic table enables us to go from moles of nickel to grams of nickel. So if we were to pass 20 milliamps for one hour through a nickel ion solution, we would electroplate 0 0.022 grams of nickel onto the cathode. So that's as far as we're